Next problem. What is the magnitude of the acceleration of an object which, starting from rest, reaches a speed of 7 meters per second when moving with constant acceleration for 11 seconds? How far does the object travel in this time? Again, what is the magnitude of the acceleration of an object which, starting from rest, reaches a speed of 7 meters per second when moving with constant acceleration for 11 seconds? How far does the object travel in this time? Please copy that problem down and then give it a shot. Step one, draw the path. Simple, one-dimensional path. We can indicate that we're starting at zero meters per second and reaching a speed of seven meters per second. Now, you might remember from your course that speed is always a magnitude, so it doesn't make sense to include the sign on a speed. That's why when I wrote the problem, I didn't tell you whether the speed was positive or negative. Speeds don't get signs. However, um, let's make this into a signed velocity number. Well, let's choose to the right as our positive direction. It's always a good idea to choose the direction of motion as your positive direction. And we chose right as the direction of motion. And now we can go back and put in the sign. Our speed is 7 meters per second, but we can say that our velocity, more useful, is positive 7 meters per second. We're trying to get into the habit of drawing the velocity and acceleration vectors now for each problem. Well, we decided we're moving to the right, so the velocity is to the right. And remember, the acceleration tells you whether you're speeding up or slowing down. Well, clearly, if we're starting with a speed of zero, then we must be speeding up. So the acceleration is parallel to the velocity. We've already chosen our positive direction. Step three, breaking into components, doesn't really apply to one-dimensional motion. So let's do our Step four, the kinematics variables. Delta x, v initial x, v final x, a sub x, and time. Let's carefully read the problem. What is the magnitude of the acceleration? All right, now, so then technically they're not asking us for the acceleration. Technically they're acting as, asking us for its magnitude. Maybe I'll make a note to myself so I don't forget. They're asking for the magnitude of the acceleration. Starting from rest, that reaches a speed, that must be the final velocity. Now, even though the speed can accurately be written down without a sign, what we need for kinematics is the velocity. So for kinematics, we've got to put that sign in. We decided that was positive 7 when moving for 11 seconds. And there's another question. How far does the object travel in this time? All right. Well, there's no law that says we can't answer two questions at the same time. Um, so now we have two tasks. We have to answer these two questions. So we're going to put two question marks in. I hope that by this point in the videos, um, you're always, always using a question mark to indicate the question. Well, clearly then, if there's two questions, we should use two question marks. That's a really useful study habit that I strongly encourage you to adopt. Which question should we ask? Uh, which, which question should we answer first? Uh, it really doesn't make any difference. We can answer whichever we want first. Um, the problem asked about the acceleration first, so I'm going to start by focusing on the acceleration. But you don't have to do it that way. But uh, let's focus on the acceleration first. Um, now we have three numbers. That's all we need to pick out an equation. Now, um, since I've decided to focus on the acceleration, for the moment I'm going to ignore delta x. Even though eventually I want to know delta x2, right now I'm going to focus on the acceleration. So I'm still going to pick out an equation that's missing delta x, because right now I'm focusing on this question. So let's pick out the equation that is missing delta x. v final x equals v initial x plus a sub x 
times the time. This is the equation that's missing delta x. Now we plug in. For v final x, we certainly do not plug in 7. That would be ridiculous. We plug in positive 7. For the initial velocity, we use parentheses and plug in our 0. Now the acceleration we leave as a variable because that's the question that we're trying to answer. And the time is 11. We can use parentheses to indicate multiplication. All right, now simplifying, we have 7 equals 11 times a sub x. How can we detach the 11 from this acceleration? Well, the 11 is affixing itself by the means of multiplication. So to do the opposite, we would need to divide. That gets rid of the 11. And then we end up with the acceleration is 7 elevenths. The acceleration is 7 divided by 11. Using our calculator, 7 divided by 11 is approximately 0.636. Even though this is only approximate, I'm going to use an equal sign and not an approximate sign, uh, just because I don't feel like putting in the approximate sign. I'm doing that in all these videos. So all of my answers are rounded off, but I'm still using an equal sign and not an approximate sign. All right, as usual, I'm not going to worry about significant figures. I'm going to carry a couple extra decimal places here um, because uh, maybe I'm carrying more decimal places than usual because I'm actually kind of planning on using this number to figure out something else. I'm planning on using this number to figure out something else. Well, when you're planning to use a number to figure out something else, it's always good to keep a lot of extra decimal places, even if we were working with significant figures. Even if we were working with significant figures, um, when we use this to calculate something else, we would still include lots of extra decimal places just to avoid rounding mistakes. Okay. Um, so here's our acceleration. Now, um, this should be in units of meters per second squared. Now, mathematically, did this come out positive or negative? Well, mathematically, it came out positive. Let's put in that sign. Now, we should always check whether the sign makes sense. Were we expecting the acceleration to come out positive? Well, we, um, we chose our, our positive direction so that the velocity was positive, and the acceleration is in the same direction as the velocity. So yeah, the acceleration had better come out positive. If the acceleration had come out negative, we would have known we made a mistake. All right, now this is actually not quite the correct answer, though. Because remember, they weren't asking for the acceleration. This is the acceleration. If you go back, you'll see they were asking for the magnitude of the acceleration. The magnitude of the acceleration. Well, the magnitude of the acceleration is just 0.636 meters per second squared with no sign. It doesn't make sense to put a sign in front of a magnitude. Magnitudes are always positive. It's really kind of nonsensical then to put a sign in front of them. So this would be a good way to answer if they were asking for the acceleration. But this is a good way to answer if they're asking for the magnitude of the acceleration. Now let's go over a little notational point. Um, this is the symbol we're using for acceleration. So what symbol should we use for the magnitude of the acceleration? If this is the symbol we're using for acceleration, what symbol should we use for the magnitude of the acceleration? Um, well, actually, you know, I, I think that most textbooks don't really have a good symbol for the magnitude of the acceleration. Uh, they, they have a symbol they sometimes use for magnitude, but they actually don't really use it very much. Um, you might have seen... This is a way, oftentimes, that books indicate the magnitude of something. Uh, but this is something that's oftentimes discussed early on and then not really used very much for solving problems. This is kind of inconvenient in some ways. So how can we indicate the magnitude? Unfortunately, I think most textbooks just use the same symbol to indicate an unsigned number and a signed number. That is, most books would just call this a sub x, and they would also call this a sub x. Uh, even though one is signed and the other is unsigned. Well, but that's perfectly fine if you're already pretty good at physics. You're not going to get confused by that. But if you're finding physics to be difficult, I think it's very important to have different symbols for the signed number and the unsigned number, for the acceleration and the magnitude of the acceleration. So I have invented a symbol for the magnitude of a um, concept. I've invented a symbol for magnitude um, that is um, going to be more useful to us. Uh, it's the dot.